Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. Someone is $15 million richer. We're going to discuss what it's like in Vegas for New Year's Eve this week, including how many people are going to be visiting, what will happen downtown and on the Strip. Speaking of downtown, Circa's Legacy Club is now open, as is their hotel. What will the rooftop bar experience be at Vegas's newest casino? And we will debrief my Rio stay from last week. Even more craziness happened after we recorded the episode. So stick around for that. I'm Sean Coomer, the founder of Miles to Memories, joined by Mark Osterman, my managing editor. Let's hit it. So, uh, Mark, it's nice and beautiful here in Vegas. Christmas was great. How was your holiday? It was good. It was good. We actually had a white Christmas. So uh, I know you're jealous of that, kind of. Maybe <laughs> the one day you want it is uh, want some snow on the ground, which... I had heard on a radio station, for some reason, Michigan is the state with the whitest Christmas, like that has snow on the ground the most often, which I found bizarre because Alaska and everything else. But for some reason, this is where you got to go if you want some snow for your holidays. Well, we don't have a white Christmas here, although we have been getting some rain after like a 200 plus day uh, drought where we didn't get any rain. So I guess that's good, but it's been it's been cold been nice. Check out our holiday tour on the channel if you want some more Vegas Christmas love. And uh, definitely check out our Shuttered Vegas Casino Tour that just dropped this week if you want to see what all of the closed casinos still look like. But let's get into the news because we have so much to talk about today. And we're going to start out with one lucky winner. I think his name is Kevin, right? We only learned his first yeah. name, Kevin. <laughs> but he won over They 50 blocked out his face and everything. They just showed the picture of him holding the check, Kevin. <laughs> and he won over $15 million at the uh, Sun Coast, which is in uh, Summerlin. Big winner. I think that's the biggest jackpot since 2008 for Megabucks. On on Christmas Eve, too. So all I want to do is go, Kevin! Home Alone. <laughs> yes, nice, <laughs> nice Home Alone reference. But yeah, the great thing is Sun Coast tweeted out the picture of him. And uh, he's holding up the big check in front of his face like this. And it just says, Kevin... And uh, fifteen million four hundred ninety-one thousand one hundred and five dollars. So congratulations to Kevin. There have been—I don't know if there's been more big jackpots since the reopening in June, or they're just publicizing them more. It seems like the information is just getting out there more. So I'm hearing more I about saw, them. I saw some of the uh, the the Twitter feed. People were like, "Oh, oh, pandemic! You want people to come more? So now all of a sudden you loosen up the machines. You know all the conspiracy theorists. So could be true. Who knows?" <laughs> Or they just, uh, we have the same number of jackpots. They didn't loosen the machines. They're just publicizing the, the wins that no. happen. No. I'm going to go with the conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I, think they, I think that conspiracy is too kind to the casino, saying that they would actually loosen the machines. If anything, the conspiracies I hear are that they have tightened the machines. But I don't know. We shall see. Speaking of uh, issues, well, we weren't speaking of issues, but there are some big issues. We talked a few weeks ago about the New York, New York roller coaster getting brand new equipment. What that meant was brand new trains. They actually ordered brand new trains for this coaster because believe it or not, it actually makes a decent amount of money. And they were testing those trains well, out. At 20, at 20 bucks a ride, I would hope they make some money off of it. <laughs> yeah, it's a cash cow. I mean, it, everybody who you ever talk to who's ever ridden it talks about how rough it is and how crazy their ride experience is, but people still ride it. And so they wanted to get new trains, hoping that that would give a better ride experience. Specifically, I think they were getting rid of the really hard over the shoulder restraints that you see and putting in a newer system that's a little bit more comfortable. So they put the train on the lift hill. We don't know how much they tested it, but the train derailed. <laughs> it derailed and it damaged the entire lift hill. Like, well, I'll, I'll throw some pictures up here, but it looks pretty crazy. Yeah, definitely not going to be riding that in the future. Uh, maybe a couple years from now. I don't know. I've never seen like the track just bent. And like the walkway and everything, I've never seen anything like it. I know you're you're much more into coasters and all that, so I'm sure you've seen it over the years. But that's pretty scary when it's testing up to launch and you're just replacing the trains. You wouldn't think it'd be that major of a thing, but man, scary stuff. Yeah, Coaster Nation put up some pictures and some analysis, and I actually found that through uh, through Travel Zork. So I just want to give them credit, but. Coaster Nation put up pictures of this. You can see it sideways. Apparently, one of the trains de decoupled and then derailed, dragging the other trains basically into the structure. The big question is, did it do damage to the full structure of the coaster or just to that section of track on the lift hill? If it's the full structure and the damage could be significant, we could see this coaster closed for a long time or perhaps permanently. Of course, 
probably a little too early to to say that, but it's certainly not going to open in a couple of weeks. Going to be quite a while, I think, before we see that roller coaster return, which is, I guess, a shame. But would it be so bad if maybe they got some insurance money and built a new one? <laughs> I mean, if I could go through it without leaving with a migraine, that'd be a, a plus. So maybe just build it all new. Yep. Build it all new and... It's a great location. I've always said that it's one of the best locations of a roller coaster anywhere in the world, especially at night. Sitting right there, it goes right on the strip. You can see amazing stuff, and uh, it's definitely worth it. If you're going to ride it, ride it at night. Uh, it's not always, of course, the most comfortable thing, but hopefully it comes back. And if it came back as something new, that would be, I think, every uh, coaster enthusiast's dream. Yeah. <laughs> Wishing the best for that. And a next news item is just a quick thing to kind of update people on Mirage. That was one of the casinos to open later than all the rest. It opened in August and it's had its hotel kind of closed during the week. Now they announced that in January, February, they're going to close the entire property from Monday at noon until Thursday at noon. Not the restaurants, not the casino, nothing. They're locking the doors for three days a week. This is the first casino to really do that and uh, a sign that uh, the early 2021 is not going to be uh, all that good. Well, kind of going into later in the show, the very first day of 2021 is probably going to be good. But yeah, after that, not so much. Yeah, I, I yeah, we're going to talk about New Year's Eve a little bit later and what they're expecting, which is maybe a surprise. But yeah, there's not much else to say here. We have other casinos, Planet Hollywood, Link, Park MGM, Mandalay Bay, where they are closing their hotels during the week, but they're keeping their casinos open. It just probably shows you that Mirage being kind of separated on the strip from its other M Life properties just probably isn't drawing all that well. And they don't want to take on the loss. So they say that they're not expecting it to extend past February at this point. So hopefully it's just an early 2021 thing. And I will keep you updated. But let's talk about some good news, Mark. The Legacy Club at Circa. Of course, the hotel also opened, and so did the Legacy Club. I haven't had a chance to, to see either. Hoping to get to the Legacy Club, but it looks like an amazing space. Yeah, I, uh, I watched the video from uh, the news channel and, and the local news in Vegas, and they did a good walkthrough of it. And there's when you walk in, there's gold bars everywhere. I think a thousand thousand uh, ounces of gold, which is pretty impressive. And you see legit gold bars as you walk in. Rooftop pe outdoor patio area uh, overlooking, you know, all Fremont and then the Strip and everything. So it looks amazing. I mean. Everybody knows I'm a, a Circa fanboy so far, so I can't uh, I can't wait to go there. I already uh, before we did the show, I went and uh, booked a reservation for when I'm going in February. So definitely gonna have to go check that out when I'm in town. Nice, yeah. I was surprised that there were so many reservations available. I thought this week would be busier, but it seemed like I could get in pretty much uh, any day. And yeah, like you said, it's on the 60th floor. So imagine those views you're gonna get considering this is the tallest building uh, in this entire area of the city. So you should be able to see uh, some amazing views. And that gold is sort of interesting. They kind of stole the thunder, I guess, of Binion's, but Binion's doesn't have their million dollars uh, anymore. But it's sort of kind of a, a similar feel to that. And uh, there's a sign above it that says the current value. So yeah, it looks like a great space. The hotel, the early reviews are pretty good. So hopefully we'll get to check some of that stuff out a little bit more. And hopefully I'll be able to bring everybody a video of the Legacy uh, Lounge uh, or Legacy Club coming soon. But it looks it looks amazing and both big fans of Circa. So I guess everybody out there is probably tired of hearing about that. But if you haven't yet seen our Circa video from opening day, Mark and I were both there. And uh, it's a cool video. So you can see the hotel or the casino, not the hotel, but everything else uh, that Circa has to offer. And uh, if you guys want to say, uh, sorry, no, go ahead. Um, did I say ounces? I said ounces, right? A thousand ounces yeah i think so it is a thousand <laughs> ounces so you were you were correct I, did you i don't think you said yeah pounds, i just want to make but. sure i didn't say pounds or something crazy and people were like what <laughs> now let's move on to talk about new year's eve and i we started by talking about fremont street this was our on on the agenda for today to talk about fremont street and how they're charging a security fee to get into fremont so let's start there 25 dollars on new year's eve and it gets you absolutely nothing except access to Fremont Street. Which is that, like, I've never been to Vegas for New Year's Eve. It's not something I've ever been all that enticed to do because it just seems like it'd be a hot mess. But is that normal that they charge for, for entrance? Because I know they normally have bands and live music and stuff. So I would feel like that's kind of normal. But they don't have any of that stuff. They don't have any live music. So it just seems kind of weird. Maybe that's a way for them to pare down the crowd a little bit. I don't know. 
Yeah, they normally do have an event there with music. And so it's an entire ticketed New Year's Eve event. So this is sort of similar and similar in the way that they're blocking off the street and they're going to have secured entry into the street. But you're just not going to get any live entertainment or anything else. So I guess this is just to cover their security fees for that. But I don't know. I think that this area is so popular with locals that they're probably anticipating a lot of people coming down there and they're just trying to keep it from getting too crowded to keep the distancing, like you say. And that's probably what it is. Hotel guests will get a wristband so they don't have to pay additional to get onto the Fremont Street. Yeah, so it's basically business as usual to what it is in past years, except there's no real event there. It's just to, to get access. Now on the Strip, Metro is really staffing up. They said that they expect 200,000 visitors to Vegas proper all the, you know, to come to the city. That's a lot. Yeah, I was surprised to see that. And I see that they're still closing down the boulevard, which they normally do for the fireworks and everything. Everybody goes out there and watches them. But I'm a little bit surprised because they're not having fireworks. They're not doing any of that type of stuff. So I didn't think they would close it down, but maybe it's just a safety thing, knowing people are going to be drinking and walking around and as well as to maybe spread some people out a little bit because 200,000 people sounds like a lot in the COVID era. Um, so you got to put them somewhere, I guess. I don't know. I, I, w I was surprised. Although, you know, if you look back at like Memorial Day weekend, how packed Fremont was and everything. So it's not that far off or that crazy compared to what we've seen on other holidays recently. Yeah, Labor Day weekend, I think is what you're you're talking about. Yeah, it was okay, really, yeah. Uh, really busy. And yeah, I'm surprised about the 200,000 number. I had been looking at hotel rates at some of the Caesars properties just kind of last week, just browsing. Right now, I think as we're recording this, you can book Bally's for $98 on New Year's Eve, which is the cheapest of the Caesars properties. And there's several in the hundreds. Now, on a normal year, how much, you is, never... how much is the masquerade suite at uh... <laughs> <laughs> I should check. I should really check because I know they're selling it. We know they're selling it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so you can still, I mean, you can stay at Bally's for $98 as of right now on New Year's Eve, which is pretty darn cheap, or at least that's on my my account with the, with the normal diamond discount, no comp or anything. So yeah, I mean, it's going to be decent, I guess, better than it's been, uh, but hopefully people will be able to maintain distance. The strip is big when it's closed. Now they're not closing as much as they normally do. I think they're only closing up to Spring Mountain, but that should be plenty of space to let people wander the streets and hopefully, like you say, stay distant, but have fun in a year to end a year that's been uh, so crazy. And then let's talk about the Rio, Mark, because last week we had that episode where I was in the room recording it. And I even said some stuff on the podcast that wasn't correct because I was told incorrect things. Like, for instance, after we recorded, I went to record all my night footage of the casino and the hotel and everything else around there. And then I was going to go use my $25 food and beverage credit to go eat dinner at the American Grill because that was the only restaurant that was supposedly open. So imagine my surprise when I go walk into the American Grill, which is completely open, like there's no barricade or anything, but there's not a single employee there. Uh, I walked all the way. I could have walked right into the kitchen. I could have walked pretty much anywhere in there. So I go to the front. It was open. It was open if you cook for yourself. Yeah, I guess it was uh, it was self serve <laughs> on, on opening night. So I went to the front desk and I asked him, I said, I have this food and beverage credit you guys gave me. Where can I use it? And the guy was all confused and he consulted a list and he asked the, the supervisor that was standing there. And they came to the conclusion that I could go to Smashburger. That was the only place that I could go and charge <laughs> it back to my room. And I told them I had credits and they said, OK, so I go to Smashburger have a, an interesting night, film everything, go to sleep, wake up the next day to leave, and I go to check out. And I noticed that there's a resort fee added to my room that the rate he had told me was, he had told me two different rates, $19 and then $40 off. And in my mind, I wasn't thinking that my rate was actually $69 before. So $40 off would have been $29. And he told me $19, but the rate was $39 when I went to go check out. So somehow... Uh, <laughs> That, they the needed to bring Dustin Hoffman in from Rain Man to do that math for you guys. <laughs> so I'm just like tired. It's like eight in the morning and I, I have more stuff to go film. And so I, I tell the lady I, and she sees all the notes on there. I said, well, he told me it was either 19 or 29 based on the math. So I said, I'll pay 29, but I'm not going to pay 39 and I'm not going to pay more. But she also informs me that Smashburger isn't applicable for the food and beverage credit. And... <laughs> 
gosh. I just I just sighed to her and I said, look, I said, you can go back and, you know, you can do it. I came to the front desk yesterday. I asked, you know, what was going on. I was told the American Grill was opening. It didn't open. Nobody knew what was going on. They told me to go to Smashburger. So she goes in the back. She was very nice. She goes to the back, comes back and says, well, I can't take off the Smashburger, but I was able to just take off the entire room charge. So essentially, I paid for my $23 smash burger, which I was expecting to be covered by the food and beverage credit, and then they didn't charge me for the room at all. That's fine. That's not what I wanted or anything like that. But what a crazy experience. And it just shows that on one hand, they were very disorganized and reopening, but I sort of get that it was their first night. But to not even know what restaurants are open or actually, they didn't even have a restaurant, Mark. The only place to eat was smash burger. And they told me that that restaurant was open. So it's just, yeah, just a crazy stay, a crazy ending. And uh, the full review will be coming in a couple of days, but uh, I got the room for free. Gonna be, so what can it's going to be low stars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it will not be so great. Nothing personal. I feel happy that these people are able to return to work and hopefully this property can be successful. I'm not trying to bring any negative energy to them or uh, anything negative to them. I have to report what happens and be truthful about it. So no ill will on my part, of course. I got the room for free. I would have been more than willing to pay $69 plus tax for the room I booked or $29 for the revised rate like he told me. But uh, I still think based on all the misinformation and all the things they messed up that it was it was OK. I don't yeah. plan on going back. And uh, yeah, I'm glad it's behind me. It's bizarre. Yeah, it's bizarre that a front desk would not even the supervisor would not know what is open like you think that would be on their their morning call sheet or whatever, like when they get together for their group meeting before they open the doors, they'd be like, hey, this is what we have going on right now. The, this tower is open. These restaurants are open. This is, you know, like, how do you mess that up? The, it should be everybody should know what you can actually go to. It's bizarre. Just bizarre. It is bizarre. I wonder if something happened between the time I checked in when she told me that American Girl was going to open at three and then the evening, like maybe the, the one person that they had brought in to run it or something called in sick. I don't know. Um, it was like wide open, the restaurant, which was strange. I don't remember it being so wide open during the day, but I looked everywhere for an employee. And then, of course, the front desk said it was closed and then it never opened. So, yeah, just more strangeness to this property. And uh, like I said last week, for everybody who watched I just don't see any reason to stay there. If you're a Caesars loyalist, there's better places to stay on the strip, better rooms, cheaper prices, and uh, better locations. And, you know, uh, it's like an the unfortunate... Cromwell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll say the Cromwell is better, Bark, but uh, there's definitely better options than the Cromwell on the strip, uh, too. Uh, you can go across the street. I'd say uh, I'd say Bally's is a better Sean option. Sean just loves to hate on my favorite. Here. That's all. I don't hate it. It's, a, it's still a very nice. And I love the casino at the Cromwell. Just yeah, the, the room didn't, didn't impress me. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's an update on that. Hopefully New Year's Eve goes well and and uh, Vegas can start kind of getting through this early part of the year. It's going to be very slow. So lots of closures. And uh, we'll be here to document them and show you what it's like. Because I think that when all is said and done, this is a time in Vegas, uh, unlike anything we'll, we'll see for a long time to come. And uh, hopefully... It'll be over soon because I know there's so many people wanting it to get back to normal. Not only the people who uh, depend on the casinos for work and stuff, but the people who want to visit. I hear from people from all over the place in the comments, from Europe, from Canada, from all over the U.S. who just want to get to Las Vegas. Yeah, me too. I just want to get there too. Hey, you were already. You said you're coming in February, so that's. Uh... Yeah, I know, but it, it's not the same. The experience isn't the same, and because we use miles and points, you know, I go there. It costs me like twelve bucks to go to Vegas. You know, the rooms taken care of, the flights taken care of, using miles and points. So it's not a big thing to me if I was spending, you know, my money like spending seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand dollars just to fly and stay there. I wouldn't go right now because the experience isn't what it normally is. You know, you're not having the same type of fun you're not able to do as much stuff so i get it you know those people that are waiting that are spending their their hard-earned money i'd wait too so they're waiting till it opens up and gets back to regular and and i get that and i can't wait for that experience to come back so i'm right there with them and it absolutely will and you mentioned miles and points if you like this show if you like our mark and i i guess check out our podcast mtmpodcast.com we talk about travel miles and points there and then of course we have this mtm vegas video podcast on our youtube channel every single week plus like i said at the beginning we have tours guides uh, hotel reviews and this week we have our holiday tour and our shuttered vegas tour so you can see all of the casinos that are still closed 
and there's more than you would think. Thanks so much for watching, for listening. We'll see you guys in the comments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Let us know what you think about these stories. And uh, are you going to be hanging out on the strip on New Year's Eve? Let us know that too. Talk to you next time. See you next week. Happy New Year. Bye. Happy New Year. Thank <laughs> you.